What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at Geronimo. This is a virtual reality game made for PC VR that I have been covering since it was initially announced. It is still in development and we are told by the two developers of the game Pebbles and Stilton that it will be available for us to play sometime in 2023. And they recently published an update that includes some new images as well as some new videos that I think you guys are going to be extremely interested in. The developer update says that, quote, we've been busy with a lot of different systems and features. Here's a compilation of a small portion of the work that we have done lately. Maps have been created, updated, and some even fully reworked. Lighting has been improved over many iterations and optimizations were made. Customizations have been and still are expanding by the day, which is a very tedious process, but we feel will be worth it in the end. Aside from this, we are also now working on expanding the breaching systems and tools, as well as adding even more content, such as maps, weapons, and clothes. This is awesome news out of two extremely talented developers. It sounds to me as though they're moving on from the player controller and actually operating the game from the first person perspective in VR and they're moving into some of those little details that are really the important polish and quality game design decisions that go on top of a game and make it complete. So that is very exciting news. Let's take a look at the video that they released showcasing the Night Raid compilation. So this is a two minute clip that I'll have looping here in the background while I play it. This is Pebbles and Stilton working through some of their night missions. We see now the MP7 in use for the first time, a very capable submachine gun. We also see a suppressor wrap or cover on the can on that MP7, which is pretty cool. We're also seeing a high rise mount for the laser aiming module for the first time. Very much looks like kind of the GBRS Hydra mount designed to get that laser up off the rail, afford you extra rail space, and then get you a closer co-witness with the optic. Kind of a contentious piece of kit in the tactical nerd circles uh, certainly makes sense on an mp7 in that shorter gun then we see a couple engagements here we also see them detain an epw which is pretty interesting you actually have to grab the wrists of that surrender put them behind the detainees back and then it sounds like there's a flex cuff integration as well which is pretty freaking sweet some of these engagements are pretty interesting because we're seeing some ai behavior where the ai quickly exposed himself to take a couple shots and then jump back behind cover which is a great thing to see in a vr shooter for sure and then something else I noticed here was that you're seeing a lot of particle effects coming out of the weapons. We saw this in previous updates just at the range and demos. This is the first time we've seen them indoors in a kind of CQB environment. Uh, and they look really good. I definitely think that there's some more work that can be done on them, but the smoke coming off the rifles, the way that the IR lasers interact with the beam and with the environment seem to work very well. And when that flashbang goes off as they enter the room, we also see the spoon release from the grenade body, which, which I think is just a really interesting little detail. It, it shows you how much effort they're putting in to try to make this thing as accurate as possible. Something else that's showcased in this clip that we saw in previous iterations of the night vision is we're looking through quad tubes now. So you've got you know your right eye tube, your left eye tube, and then a center tube that is a combination of your left and your right eye. And then we're also seeing as light is shown in the periphery that's outside the actual you know tubes themselves, you're able to see that light. So you do have peripheral view in this game, um, which is something that I don't see integrated often in you know flat screen first person shooters and certainly not in VR shooters either. And it's really great to be able to actually use your peripheral vision to some degree and understand what kind of light you're standing in. So you know when to bring those knots up versus when to have them down and when you might be more exposed than you otherwise would have no knowledge of it if your tubes encapsulated the entire screen. What did you guys see in this clip that I missed or didn't speak to? Eager to hear about that in the comments down below. If we keep looking through the media dump that they provided, we get some other little nuggets. Two other clips were posted not too long ago on their social media accounts. They've labeled these Tactical and Tactical 2, which I think are hilarious. And these are demos that are taking place in a test environment, but they showcase the animations very, very well, and they showcase the kit very, very well. The first one shows an operator that is in you know, a Cry G3 camouflage uniform wearing a Cry JPC. He's got a triple, triple mag placard up front. He's got a holstered pistol on his right side. 
And interestingly, he also has an aircraft safety tether attached to the D-ring of his pistol belt, which is a detail, again, that I never see in games. He's got uh, quad tube GP AVG 18s up top on that high cut helmet, an IR strobe on top, and you know also a battery pack on the back. And then it looks like he's wearing Peltor contacts as his ear protection. Um, I think the player model looks incredible. The way that he's handling the gun, the way that the walking animation all flows together just looks fantastic. The gun itself looks like a AR pattern with a can, and it looks like he's got a Aimpoint T2 on board um, in a laser aiming module. So pretty awesome little setup here and thrilled to see the player character moving and looking um, as it does in this clip. If we go on to the second quote unquote tactical media dump, we see now a silhouette and then a plate rack is set up and then another player comes in. This time the kit changes pretty significantly. Looks like he's still wearing a JPC and it might even be the same helmet, but the, uh, the attire changes completely. So no longer is this operator wearing that same like Cry G3 assault kit. He's now wearing flannels and jeans and still has some combat boots and he's swapped the AR pattern for what looks to be an MCX with an LPVO and an offset red dot, um, which is pretty cool. And then interestingly, if you look at the helmet, no longer is he wearing GP NVG 18s. It looks like he's wearing like PVS 31 alphas. And you might be thinking like, hey, days, you know, the sun's up. Why do you have those PVS 31s down? But if you look closely and you pause it just right, you'll see that those PVS 31s are actually kicked out to the side. So rather than being stowed in the 12 o'clock position, he has articulated them away from the eye um, so that you can see underneath of them, which is, you know, pretty common practice and pretty cool to see in the game. We also got some screenshots that were showcased. If we start with the first one, it shows an operator outside the building. This could very well be the same kit that we saw in the previous clip. He's looking up at that all white structure. The environment itself looks absolutely gorgeous. You got to give it up to them for making the lighting look as incredible as it does the way it reflects off of the rival rifle. We see iron, uh, iron peep sight in the back and a fixed front sight post, I think. Um, and then a laser aiming module on the rifle. It looks like he's wearing that flannel top and it's cool to see that wrist watch integration uh, and being able to wear it backwards so you can actually check time. I don't know if that's gonna display mission time or some other stat as you play through, but pretty awesome detail. If we rotate through the next one, we're seeing some interior design and they've added a ton of furniture and carpets and desks and all these other assets to these environments. It just gives me extremely high hopes for the level design and how much detail is gonna be in each one of these missions that you can really immerse yourself in and then contend with AI who are actually going to use these environments to fight from and defend themselves. Some sub T environment here as well as we move to the next screenshot. Uh, now we're underground. You see the rail car tracks, pretty spooky looking environment. Kind of reminds me of, you know, a couple of ready or not missions. Uh, but again, looks just absolutely incredible. So we keep cycling through this the first time that I remember seeing a snow map, which is pretty interesting. And if we look at the rifle now, he's swapped optics for that carrying handle, which is very basic. Uh, but that environment looks gorgeous and uh, I'm glad to see that there's kind of these big open mission you know style objectives in the game as well so that you'll have some room to maneuver and communicate it'll be interesting to see how players interact um, given the space to maneuver and make bigger decisions other than you know do I go left or right down this hallway so we keep going through we see some more interior uh, level design features you got a cot here with a partially rolled bedroll um, a laptop sitting on the uh, uh, the desk there makes me think like what kind of SSE sensitive site exploitation is going to be required. Is there going to be missions where you have to snatch up a laptop or do some sort of exploitation on electronic devices in order to complete mission objectives? I certainly hope that that is the case and seeing props like that make me think that it could very well be. The next image shows a storage area. Looks like it is at ground level um, and they're storing, I don't know, grain, uh, fertilizer. I don't know, something, but it looks pretty. Nice work, boys. Keep flowing through here, we see a kitchen area. It looks like it is vacant and not occupied. Pretty cool detail there if you look at the carpet wrinkled on the floor. Uh, just awesome little details that you can really tell Stilton and Pebbles are putting some effort into the design of these levels and not just you know throwing them together. Uh, but there's a lot of thought going into each little detail and I love to see it. We keep cy cycling through. You see sandbags barricaded up in this structure, a bunch of weapon cases and crates laying around. You know, my mind immediately goes to barricaded shooter, well-defended area. Um, you see a chair 
there, they're sitting kind of in front of a window, silhouetted in the distance, which makes me think a sentry could be occupying this area. Uh, this is kind of a nightmare assault sort of scenario, but you'll love to see it. You know it's going to be a blast to work through that. All in all, great news coming out of the Geronimo dev, dev team. Make sure you guys are following them on their socials, certainly on YouTube, and then jump in their Discord to stay up to date on all things Geronimo. And as soon as I get more information on it and can share it with you guys, I will be doing that. So if you're eager to learn more about this game, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you want to support the channel even more, consider becoming a member for some dope perks by clicking the join button down below. I'm Control Pairs. This is Geronimo, and I'll see you guys in the next one.